Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch and it's been a while. Uh, I need to catch up on these Inside Star Citizen videos. Tigracon has seen the latest one. He's told me a little bit about what's happening. Uh, they're going to be putting rivers on Microtech in 317, which is the next update that's coming up. The entire Stanton system has been CIG's petri dish for testing ideas. That's basically how game development goes. You try an idea, you put it in the game, and if it works, you keep it. If it doesn't, you take it out. Games are littered with systems. I mean, you see, if you do data mining in any game, you will find bits and pieces of systems that were going to be added to the game, but were taken out for one reason or another. You find them in every game. Star Citizen's no different. It's had systems in it. It's had stuff taken out. Uh, it's had new stuff added. There are bits and pieces of older code that is still in the game. Uh, that's one of the problems with the game currently is that it has a lot of old legacy code from the early version of Star Citizen before development was rebooted into the current iteration that we're playing now. Um, and so they're replacing a lot of that old code with newer stuff. But I want to get on with this um, video. We're going to do two Inside Star Citizens today in order to catch me up on seeing these. So we're going to be doing Off Camera and River Song. Oh, let's get into it here. And see what Jared's got for us today. Hi all, me again. Now, last year, we started a, a very irregular series of segments exploring the daily life of people who don't often get showcased in our behind the scenes material. Mm, yeah. We'd like to bring that back again this week with an origin story for someone that joined CIG last year directly from the Star Citizen community and made a big change to the quality of our trailers and weekly episodes of this very show. Hmm. Now we'll have a sprint report for you in the second half, but cool. please give a warm welcome to one of the folks at the very heart of making ISC possible each and every week. This sounds like me. Last time I thought it was me and it was Justin. <laughs> one of the, my favorite parts of being a <sighs> gameplay capture this thing they did a little bit of fun <laughs> raftron <laughs> like raftron <sighs> in a cave full of picos which still nobody's found oh that actually is in my the game my favorite has to be riding on the missile like Dr. Strangelove it's actually my <laughs> desktop background at the moment <laughs> um before coming to CIG, I worked as a freelance cinematographer. I started freelancing when I was still at university. Um, I actually didn't tell anybody I was a student. By hmm. the time graduation came around, I couldn't go to my own graduation because I've been booked at another university to film this. Damn. After oh, uni, these red cameras are expensive. And started working on all sorts of projects from short films to feature films, documentaries, but my favorite thing to work on was always music videos. Really just passionate about visually telling stories. Hmm. When I got the opportunity to come here and work at Cloud Imperium Games, I nearly bit the hand off. I was so excited because I was actually a backer. I first pledged in 2016. And one of the things that I always loved about Star Citizen was everything is so beautifully lit. Yeah. So they are working on I the lighting. Being a backer before coming to do this job really helps. I've already got years worth of just memories of going, okay, there was a... Yeah, these caves are actually here. You can actually fly a ship into the cave and land. They've actually got these big caves now. It used to be small openings. Now they're huge. The place I found that one time that was pretty cool. I think I know how I can get back there. Knowing all the different ships, their interiors, all of that was like a massive help when I started working here. And it's really it helped influence a lot of what's going on. One of the most rewarding parts of the job is working with the incredible marketing cinematics team. Mm. My boss, Jesse, is 
amazing. He's got such an incredible um, resume. That thing he's got on his head, that's a tra That's an IR tracker. He's got it connected to his headphones. So he's got a tracker on his, uh, probably sitting on top of his monitor, up top, somewhere around up here. And that's for head tracking, which is cool. I've always wanted to get one of those. I had something like it that worked with the webcam. Never really worked right. They're, these things are expensive, though, but they but they work pretty good for head tracking. So, um, I did use Tigra's um, Kobe Eye Tracker for a little while, and it, that actually did a pretty good job for head tracking. I think I'm thinking of getting one of my own. Working on Those are expensive, too. Most of the things that I grew up loving, we'll sit down for an hour and just go through some of the shots, and just getting his feedback is so incredible Ooh. working oh the rail gun the on those things those hurt in LA is fantastic. <laughs> the back justin is so full of positive energy at all times that me being a grumpy brit um at first i think there was a little bit of a clash where i was like i don't understand <laughs> how brit. a person can be this full of positive energy but he's really uh rubbed a lot of that off onto me now um, so every time you have a call with Justin, it's amazing. It's like you you leave it feeling way more energized. <laughs> As a gameplay capture artist, one of my main roles is filming the B-roll for ISC. Uh, but I also work on the patch trailers, getting to show off all the features of an upcoming patch. As well as working on other gameplay trailers, such as the Alien Week trailer or the Hover Quad trailer. I want one of those. When features reach um, a particular level of stability, um, we put them into the live environment, uh, which is where you guys play every day. Before that, we have the PTU. The instability there is generally not great, but it's being worked on. Before that, we have Evocati. Evocati is usually very unstable. Yeah. Before that is where I spend all my day. <laughs> the biggest challenge of this job is trying to work around a lot of these issues. There isn't always an opportunity to get a bug fixed in order to capture with it. So we have to figure out a way to capture it that still shows it, but it avoids all of these issues. And then on, it'll be my job to go into the game and try and capture that and show that off. Trying to make it look as cinematic as I can, but also mm. trying to really make it look honest to the way that it's going to be when the players get hold of it. coming to work here and actually being a part of the experience of seeing behind the door and seeing the incredible work that goes on here is fantastic. Honestly, the best thing about working here is just being able to play with all the new features before anyone else. I've said to quite a few people now that it wasn't that I wanted to work in the games industry, I wanted to work here. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, it's never going to be me because yeah, people <laughs> see and hear me more than enough as it is like in this upcoming all-vehicle sprint report that I'm going to start right now. Right now. Right. As this latest free fly comes to a close, let's start our special... This thing. This is a new exploration ship. This thing looks like the Twilight from um, Clone Wars, the ship that um, Anakin and Ahsoka steal from, uh, I think it's not Dooku. I think they get it from Grievous, though he never meets Grievous in person. I think this had been no, no. Was this Ventress's ship? I think this might have been. I think the Twilight was Ventress's ship, and they basically acquired, um, um, uh, requisitioned it for their own use. This thing looks like the Twilight with the with the wings configured the way it is. All vehicle sprint report with this look at fan favorite, the Corsair from Drake Interplanetary, currently taking its first steps into gray box phase. Oh, so it's not too long it's off. It's that the internal layout developed in white box will be further explored and developed, making certain everyone involved is happy with just how everything fits inside. Oh. As we push inside, we can see the hangar bay here at the rear of the ship. 
From there, we work our way through the main component room and into the habitation area. And beyond that, the center point that serves as general access throughout the ship. Cool. Up here in the cockpit, current thinking is that this will be pushed farther along in process earlier so it can serve as a sort of general style guide Doesn't for artists look like working the, on the rest uh... of the ship. Twilight on the inside, the but definitely the on the outside. Line, uh, I want one of these. The continuing progress of the Drake Vulture. As this is for through, this is for salvage. Work now beginning on LODs, as well as these early tests on the wear and tear shader you can see here. Hmm. And once VFX and lighting passes begin, it's easy to see that the Vulture will no doubt make a fine looking addition to the Drake collection of spacecraft. Oh yeah. Cool. Banu Merchantman explorations continue with these white box explorations of more internal areas within, including the medical center, Definitely making some progress here on this thing. Security room. Hmm. And WC suite. Cool. And I'm going to tell you, the internal discussion about potentially including even multi-species facilities that are specific to the Banu and even the Xion here has been pretty intense. Hmm. I'm pooped just thinking about it. <laughs> As work continues on the interior of the Banu Merchantman, other oh, staff then. continue pushing on the exterior with this quick look at huh. the absolutely ginormous landing gear and rigging tests that are currently underway. Damn it. Come back. Continue As work continues oh, on the interior God. of the Banu Merchantman, other staff continue... That's a person next to that. That thing's going to be ginormous. Is that thing bigger than the... Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. It can't be. They would have to be able to land on a, on a uh, starport. Or is it? Is this thing going to be bigger than the 890 jump? Holy moly. Continue pushing on the exterior with this quick look at That's the absolutely big. ginormous landing gear and rigging tests that are currently underway. Yeah. Now landing gear and the related compression animations are essential in effectively conveying the true heft and feel involved with a ship successfully touches down. It's the little things. The really enormous little things. <laughs> yeah. Work it's also big. continues on the Scorpius from RSI oh. as artists take one wing to the and Tiger are going to get us one of these and reversing it for the other three. There was also recent work on the entry closest, and egress points. Closest thing to an X-wing we're going to be able to get in this game. And finally, before we let you go this week, let's go deep inside the Hull Sea and take a nice long look at its current interior. Oh, that almost looks like it's done. Folks who have followed along with the development history of the Hull Sea will already know that it began its journey through the ship pipeline quite some time ago, before it was eventually moved to the backlog until much needed technologies could be built. When it came time to pull it out of mothballs and start up again, many aspects of the shipbuilding pipeline had continued to evolve, along with the visual expectations of everyone. Yeah, they've got a lot of ships that are built on the older tech when they first started out that have to be converted over to the new ship tech. That's a lot of technical debt they've got to get through. When involved. So while work on the upcoming cargo refactor continues, members of the EU vehicle content team have been gently bringing the whole sea up to modern Star Citizen standards. This includes work on new tractor beam and remote camera UI being developed with, I'm sure you've probably guessed it, the ever popular building box tech, which will allow <laughs> players to successfully operate this unique addition to the persistent universe. And while its smaller sibling, the diminutive Hull A is scheduled to arrive before it in the upcoming Alpha 317, 
We'll continue to oh. check in on this economy altering vehicle as it continues its long journey from concept to completion. We're finally getting these ships that were in concept. We're finally getting them. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Will Price, like so many others, came from the community and that his work is an essential part of making ISC each and every week. That some of the biggest and most anticipated vehicles are currently making their way through the ship pipeline and that and that the internal battle for the merchantman's toilets has only just begun. <laughs> now, don't forget that the free fly that's currently underway ends real soon. Check the Robert Space Industries. I haven't been in the game the in a while. For inside I've been Star wanting Citizen. to get in and just we'll see you back here next week. Uh, Jump Town's back, as well as uh, the uh, Xeno threat. Alrighty then. Well. That's interesting. A whole A, a ship that's been in concept for a really long time. It's finally coming to the game. And that's pretty cool for that guy that uh, he has some, he has experience working in film, is working on the game, working to make ISC really good. That, that was really cool part. Wow. So, we're gonna move on. We're going to take a look at River Song here. Okay, so catching up here, we're gonna cover River Song, the next Inside Star Citizen. So let's get to it. Let's see what is going on here. This Tiger watched this one. He told me a little bit about what's going on but I haven't seen this one yet. So let's do it. Rivers are more than just water. They're a place to explore. They're a place to find harvestables that you can pick up. Oh, it's they're blowing. They're a place where everything is amplified versus the surrounding terrain. And the very first river will be in 317 through the hills of Microtech. Cool. Microtech is becoming their playground for testing ideas. They are testing the cloud tech that they introduced with Crusader on the planet, and now the rivers. And it looks like the water is going to flow with the river instead of it being just a water layer and just a river structure. I think what they're wanting to have is to have the water actually flow through the river and for there to actually be rapids and waterfalls and things like that. That would be cool. Go river rafting on Microtech. That would be cool. River Since giver. This time last year, we started to take rivers from what was a pretty tech demo to something we could release. Hmm. We thought we were ready to put this out in 316. We were pretty happy with what we had, but we still needed some more changes to bring it ready to put out into the PU. We started by doing a refactor all, all of our object scattering so we could have far more power and far more performance when we're distributing objects across the planet. One of the biggest things I wanted to improve as well was to increase the density around the rivers, but without increasing the global density of our objects, this was mm. going to be difficult which led me to work on on-demand spawn points, a system where we can pass a position to the biome builder and will automatically scatter appropriate assets at that location. We now procedurally place on-demand spawn points along the length of the river and around the basin. Hmm. One of the major... That's where they use procedural generation smartly. Instead of using it as a crutch or relying on it too much, we, um. No Man's Sky relies upon um, procedural generation for almost everything. They're using it as an artist's tool. And uh, their planet tech has been going through a lot of iterations. They're, this game's going to have the most advanced planet side tech of any game I've seen in a long time. Probably ever. The things that we had to add was dressing presets. Uh, which allow us to 
um, add specific objects around locations like rivers. And we also had to build the river mesh from the ground up, which involves spline mesh building, which took a long time. That did sadly mean that we missed 316, but it's all the better for it, as we've worked on all of these different interactions for the player with the rivers. For example, as of 317, you may now walk down into rivers and oceans ah, as long so, as you're wearing uh... a helmet. <laughs> okay. So... You may explore underwater, you keep your helmet on, you won't no, drown. No instant death going into the water anymore. You can now drive cool. gravlev bikes over both oceans and rivers cool. without just falling through and exploding. Good. We also have harvestables around the river's edge for you to explore and collect we also did a rework of our water caustics system, meaning that there are water caustics thrown by the river and its basin, both onto objects above the water, like your ship or trees or rocks, and onto the surface below. Planet content team haven't had a full chance to take a visit of the oceans yet. So while there are assets down there, you can expect improvements in coming patches. The next big so underwater to is going to be fizz areas, so you can throw things into the river and watch them flow down. Huh. As well as work on the foliage shader, which is going to create more varied and seasonal foliage across our planets, as well as just the rivers. In the future, are gonna what I want awesome. is for an artist to be creating a planet and say, okay, I'm happy with the elevation, let's create a river system, and for it to be done. And we're not quite at that stage yet. Each river is maybe one or two clicks, but it needs to be hundreds of rivers per planet without even thinking about it. Hmm. The river in 317 doesn't have any missions or QT markers to find it with, so you will have to go exploring to find it. Although hopefully this video has been a help. River tech is more than just adding running <laughs> water to the surface of our planets and moons. It's the collective gathering of mesh and shader erosion and foliage, traversal over, under, and through the surface. And it's the harbinger of things like lava fields and roads and so much more. And up next on this week's show, a look at upcoming efforts to improve our reputation and hostility systems in Alpha 317 and beyond. We just got done running Ninetales Zena Threat and Jump Town. You seem to be really enjoying these dynamic events. Oh, you're yeah. running bounty missions, you're running I've been watching people have them just having a hell of a fun really with it. I'm excited about that. As a I designer, it's to pretty cool to look at these and not see all the little things that we can do to make this better, to make these not just good, but great. And in order to do that in the near future, we're going to be implementing some new features into the reputation and hostility systems. Okay. With the current reputation system, all of your relationships to NPCs are static. That means that essentially you can't become friends with the, the criminals and you can't become enemies with uh, the law enforcement. In addition, if you shoot someone, just a single bullet can make it so that everyone around you suddenly starts raining hell down upon you. And that can be a pretty <laughs> awful experience. Yeah. We're going to be looking to address that in uh, a multitude of ways. We're going to be looking to have reputation start driving hostility. So essentially, how NPCs react to you and how you see them. As you become uh, more and more friendly, uh, build up that affinity with NPCs of a certain organization, they will begin to shift their opinion of you. You can actually do missions or content for Ninetales, and if you get to a certain point in their bar, they will stop shooting at you and start just letting you go by, and then eventually even start protecting you. By hmm. the same measure, if you start uh, attacking law enforcement or committing too many crimes, after a certain point, uh, Crusader security is going to start hunting you down and attacking you um, <laughs> on site instead of waiting for you to commit a crime. Okay. On the side of making it so that people don't attack you when you just fire a single bullet, we're looking at in the slightly more distant future, where if you are in the green zone with a organization, if they really, really like you, then they actually have a larger threshold that you have to break over in order to cause them to want to attack you. Um, we, want, we don't want it to be global so that players can't abuse it, but we do want it to be something that is a bit of a benefit Thank if you. you go and make friends with these people. Because uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of abuse of things right now. Griefers are a problem. Griefers are a problem in a lot of games, but they're a problem in Star Citizen. 
pad rammers and things and they're an issue though cig unlike certain companies called <laughs> frontier um are actually doing in something about it these changes are going to be largely invisible to players it's really more about at this point giving the feature and the tools to our developers doing combat and a nomad continue building the content okay that our players and our developers really want in 318 and onward this content will enable us to, for instance, in Xenothreat, make it so that you can actually be on the side of the Xenothreat instead of just trolling other players. Mm. In addition, for Jump Town, this will help us to sort of patch some of the holes where players can exploit the system by grabbing a quick crime stat after they've already pulled out their packages and not have to actually fight people in order to get their drugs. Mm. This also enables us to take a lot of our existing content for the lawful side and make criminal missions so that there is actually content in the game for criminals to do in the long term, not just with these events. Hmm. And of course, with additional dynamic events rolling out in the future, we can start building with this in, t in mind from the start. This feature will allow us to say that this event is going to have this faction versus this faction, and players will be able to be on those sides in a much more permanent and uh, invested fashion. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Microtech's first river is the next step forward in the systemic tools that will allow developers to bring more texture, hazard, and opportunity to Star Citizen's planets and moons. That the reputation system and its continuing development remain at the heart of enabling developers to create more meaningful and effective mission content. And that upcoming hostility changes means maybe I won't get punished so quickly when I turn a friendly hello into Accidental, unintended, friendly fire. <laughs> We're inside Star Citizen. I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you mm, on the next one. May have been there, done that. Mm. Okay. Well. First off. Off camera. That was good. This was... Not as big in content as um as previous Inside Star Citizens, but still good. I mean, still we're getting some idea of what we're gonna see in 317. Rivers, they're really flushing out the planet tech, which is, these planets are gonna look incredible in the game. We're gonna have the most detailed planets of any space game basically ever made. And they're going to have the whole A, a ship that's been in concept for ages, finally in the game. And the whole C is not long after. So we're finally getting those ships that have been in concept since almost the beginning. Finally, finally getting there. Oh, this is what real game development looks like, folks. When you play Star Citizen, you are seeing what most people never get to see. You are seeing what game development actually looks like. What the developers actually do when they make a game. But they will introduce systems. If it works, they keep it. If it doesn't, they, they chunk it. And they'll try different ideas, try different things. They will have one UI up and then they'll say, oh, no, no, this, we could actually do it better. And they change it and they change it out and put up something better. That's how game development works. That is how it works. Some people think it's magic. I mean, all right, folks, game development's hard. And I think that's why a lot of people just don't understand or, or, or are hating on Star Citizen because they don't want to accept that game development is really that hard and they want to blame the devs. You know, whenever a game launches with big problems, they want to game, they want to blame the developers on it. No, I can tell you right now, the reason why a lot of games are launching with lots of bugs and other problems has nothing to do with the developers, has nothing to do with their skills has everything to do with the executives who are making the decisions everything to do with them 
Anyway, this is what game development actually looks like. You're actually seeing it. When you play this game, when you play Star Citizen, you're actually seeing a game in development. You're seeing something that most people don't get to see. Game in such an early alpha state. Anyway, this has been a double feature of Inside Star Citizen. And I'm really looking forward to a lot of changes. I want to get my hands on uh, the Vulture. And also, I keep forgetting the other ship's name. Not the exploration ship. Not the Drake exploration ship, but the new fighter. It's like an X-Wing. I will get that name down properly sometime, hopefully. But uh, Tiger and I are planning on getting it. Uh, that's going to make for a good two-seater fighter ship for us. Because we played around with a two-seater ship from Space Tomatoes Org. One of his people allowed us to use a ship that they had. And we had so much fun with it. We had so much fun with it. And we, we, we made a lot of money doing bounties. Anyway, uh, this has been good. I'm finally caught up on Inside Star Citizen. Finally caught up. I will endeavor not to lag behind again. And also this weekend, this weekend, I'm finally doing that episode of The Professor. Finally, finally doing it. Anyway, I have been Mike the Zorch. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Click the bell icon to get notifications. And don't forget to visit the Gamers Bay community. The link is in the description below. Uh, Gamers Bay is used to be on Google+. Then Google sent it to the graveyard because they didn't know what to do with it or they couldn't figure out how to monetize it. That's more likely the, uh, the thing. They killed it. We had to start over from scratch and move the MeWe. MeWe is a social media platform that does not have ads or advertising or collects data. So they are privacy focused and we really like it. So head on over and check it out. Consider signing up. You know, it's completely free and not getting any money for this sponsor spot. It's not really a sponsor spot. But um, it's a good site and our community is growing. We just reached 4,000 members. We're finally getting back up to the numbers we had on, on Google+. We had about 12,000, almost 20,000 people. Anyway, I've been Mike DeZorch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.